Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for the Masters of Science in Management or MSM program overview webinar. We're going to get started here as it is 10 o'clock Eastern time. I am sitting here alone in the conference room, so I do not need to wear my mask, but I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for joining me wherever you are, whatever time it is uh, where you're logging in. I hope that you and your families are remaining safe during these unprecedented times. Um, and again, I really appreciate you taking a little time out of your busy schedules to speak with me today. We are uh, a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. So I'm just going to quickly dive into the aspects of the MSM program here at the University of Notre Dame Mendoza College of Business. If you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A function. Um, I, that is a lot easier for me to check than the chat function. So if you do have questions at any time throughout the webinar, feel free to type those in there. I am going to be leaving time at the end of the webinar for questions and answers uh, if you want to wait until the end as well. But if there's something pressing or you don't want to forget it, feel free to type it in the Q&A and I'll be sure to try to address as many questions as possible in the time that we have. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive right in. And first, I'm going to introduce myself. So my name is Phil Drendel. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the University of Notre Dame Mendoza College of Business and the lead recruiter for the MSM program. Uh, a little bit of background about me. I grew up here in beautiful South Bend, Indiana. I attended Notre Dame as an undergraduate. I was a psychology major. And I really wish that there was an MSM program at the time that I graduated in 2008, because I, maybe like many of you, I wasn't quite sure what that next step was going to look like after graduation. Uh, personally, I maybe wasn't as uh, eager to find a job or go to grad school after graduation. Nothing really spoke to me. So I ended up moving halfway across the world to South Korea. You can see on the left, beautiful picture of Seoul Tower. I taught English in South Korea for about nine years. And then two years or so ago, I decided it was time to move back to America. So I ended up moving back to South Bend where my family was. Um, I started my master's of higher education student affairs and eventually started with a part-time role here at Mendoza and started full time in my current position in November of last year. I loved my time at Notre Dame. It was a place that really spoke to me. As you see on the far right, I was a tuba player in the band. I taught myself how to play tuba one summer because I didn't want to pay for football tickets and I liked traveling for free. Um, but just the opportunities here, the network that I made, the friends, the, the development personally that I experienced at Notre Dame was something I knew I wanted to be a part of. So I have since represented the various graduate business programs here at Notre Dame. You can see me standing at the lovely Mendoza table. I believe that was taken in Shanghai, China last year, representing the MBA program. But I am here today to talk to you about the MSM program. Before we get into the MSM, a little bit of history on Notre Dame. So Notre Dame was founded back in 1842 by Father Edward Soren. Father Edward Soren, he was a Holy Cross priest coming from France um, with the mission that they wanted to found a college that not only educated the people in the area with the Catholic social teaching uh, that they have grown up with in France, but also they wanted the university to be a source of good in the world. Uh, the quote you see here, most powerful means for doing good in the country. They had this vision. And so they actually started in Southern Indiana and worked their way up here to Northern Indiana in the middle of winter to found the University of Notre Dame. And then as far as the graduate school is concerned, the business school here was founded in 1921 by John Cardinal O'Hara. And he also saw the business school and the business side of things fitting in with this overall mission of the university, that the primary function of commerce is service to mankind. And if we as a business school are able to speak to that mission, then we're doing a good job. Currently, the University of Notre Dame has about 12,000 total students, 3,000 of those students being graduate students. 
And the, the Mendoza College of Business itself has many top ranked programs in undergraduate business, graduate business and executive education. Um, we are currently ranked, I believe, number six in undergraduate business programs in the country. We have seven graduate business programs residentially here and the MSN program itself is ranked number five in the US. So just a little bit about Mendoza. Um, so our motto here is to grow the good in business. We truly believe that our students combined with the business acumen that we give them will go forward and do great things in the world. We want to be able to help them follow their passions achieve their goals and make an impact on themselves, their companies, their industries, and the community around them, whether it's the local community or the global community. You'll hear the word community a lot at Notre Dame because we do have this close-knit community. We believe that we are a family environment here at Notre Dame. Once you're a part of that family, we take care of our family members. You know, whether or not you're actively enrolled in school, or an alumni, we believe that you are a part of our community for the remainder of your time. And so we really want to tap into this community aspect. And that goes along with the network strength. Um, we are rated number four in alumni effectiveness globally. We have over 270 alumni clubs worldwide. If it wasn't for the alumni clubs and this network, I wouldn't have been able to get my job in South Korea. I wouldn't have been able to get my first job back in America. I wouldn't have been able to get my internship here at Mendoza, and I would not have been able to have my current role. So I understand the power of this network. It is definitely widespread. We also understand that business and education is more than just what you learn in the classroom. So there is this aspect of experiential learning, hands-on ways to utilize the skills and knowledge that you get in the classroom in real world settings. We have global opportunities with a uh, an international immersion trip as an option in the spring semester. We're very hopeful, very optimistic that it will happen this year. Um, and I'll go into depth a little bit more on the international immersion experience as well. And then this ethical foundation, right? It goes back to growing the good in business. We believe that there is a right way to do business and we wanna make sure that our students are understanding of what that right way is. So in all aspects of the curriculum, from accounting to marketing to business analytics. And it sounds strange, I know, to say that there is an ethical way to do accounting because it's just numbers, right? But we believe that there is indeed the right way to analyze the numbers, to do accounting, to you know, do business in order to then further impact the community. I'm gonna turn off my camera here so that you can kind of see a little bit bigger. You're not distracted by me here. Um, just a little bit of rundown on our MSM class for next year. So the, the program is an 11 month program designed specifically for non-business majors. The MSM program in general in the United States is a fairly new one. We were one of the first schools that came in on the ground floor that kind of established this sort of degree in the United States that originated over in Europe. And it is for students who graduate with non-business degrees, but want to then combine their unique undergraduate backgrounds with the business acumen that they gain in our program to kind of blend those together and then go forward and pursue a career that ideally takes both of those into account. It's, it's kind of a liberal arts spin on a business degree. As I mentioned, it's 11 months. We begin in June. This year, I believe the first day of classes was June 22nd. And then that goes until May when we graduate. Traditionally, the size of the class has been around 50 to 52 students. We understand that this program is uh, very attractive to many people. And in light of the current pandemic that we are experiencing, we understand that a lot of people's circumstances have changed rather dramatically. So um, with job offers being rescinded, with extra years of eligibility for NCAA athletes, with you know the market not being quite what we would like it to be, 
we are expanding the size of the program going forward to about 90 to 100 students. However, with that expansion, we are still very cognizant of the fact that a small classroom feel is one of the greatest attributes of our MSN program. And so that those 90 to 100 students are still broken up into cohorts of 45 to 50, where you are working with these cohorts, taking a lot of the same classes together, building off of each other. And then those cohorts are broken down even further into learning teams, where you are in a group of four and the students in your learning team have complementary skills to yours, ideally. So say that you're an engineering major, maybe you are stronger with the quantitative abilities and skills necessary for some of the hard skill classes. You may be paired with someone who is an art history major or a music theory major, maybe someone who is more used to presentations and the soft skills aspect of business. Ideally, you will work together. We're a very collaborative program, lots of group presentations and group projects and collaborative learning where you will reach the finish line together, kind of that uh, a high tide raises all ships aspect of the program where because our students have such a wide range of desires, passions, interests, that means that we are a lot more collaborative than maybe you'll find in other business programs. It's not that hard competition where maybe you're smiling to the person next to you, your classmate, but underneath you're really hoping that you beat them out for that top-notch job. It's not quite like that at Notre Dame because, again, especially with the MSM program, we're hoping that all of our students go into a wide variety of industries and functions, and so you really are working together to reach that last goal. Um, as far as work experience, the average work experience is zero to two years for this program with about 75% of our students coming directly out of undergrad. This is not a, a program for those with extensive work history. Um, we would more encourage those students to maybe pursue a different program such as our one year or two year MBAs programs. This um, this program is more for those students that immediately out of university or just one or two years removed without much extensive work experience want to go forward and get those business concepts and then move forward. As I mentioned, it is for non-business majors. We do accept business minors. Um, I would say the cutoff is around 18 credit hours. If you've taken more than 18 credit hours of business, in your undergraduate career. Typically, we would say that maybe you would be overqualified for the position, we, but business minors are okay. Econ majors, science business majors, political science majors, we see a lot of those students in the program. So I mentioned that we, we have a wide variety of majors. These are actual majors that we have found in the program and actual colleges and universities uh, in our current class. So from American studies and English to mathematics, mechanical engineering, psychology, uh, political science, and we are represented all around the United States. Um, I will say that as far as Notre Dame undergraduates are concerned, usually you'll see around 40 to 45 percent of the MSM class represented by Notre Dame undergraduates. However, we do have students from all sorts of universities and colleges around the country and around the world. I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth into the layout of the program. So as I mentioned, we start in June. We have three terms. The, the program's broken up into three terms. The summer term starting mid to late June you're off and running. So orientation week typically begins uh, around June 14th or 15th. And then you have seven weeks in the summer term where you are taking very intensive courses. Um, as I mentioned, you're hitting the ground running, getting these business principles. You're having, you know, final tests and midterm tests every two to three weeks. And then this is to prepare you for coming in fall and we have some classes that are semester long, so the fall semester, and then some classes that are broken up into what we call modules. It's almost like the quarter system. So classes that are these seven week module lengths, 
will you'll have some at the beginning of the semester, some at the end. This is true for the fall semester and the spring semester. In between the modules, you will have a one week break from your classes for what we call interterm intensive weeks. Um, we have used interterm in a variety of ways. And again, I'll kind of speak more in depth in these, but it's basically a way to not only give you a break from your classes, but also to kind of dive deeply into um, some specific skills or more of that hands-on experiential learning that we that I mentioned previously. And then in the spring, that is in during that interterm week is where you will find that international immersion pop-up. This is the, the general core curriculum here. Uh, so as you see here, a wide range of topics are covered in the MSM program. Um, it, it basically, the curriculum mirrors the first year of our two-year MBA. For those students that maybe have uh, some experience in these classes, such as management or economics, there may be some overlap at the beginning because they are, you know, some foundational fundamental concepts, but this is still a graduate program. And so as the course progresses, typically you'll see some new material that you haven't before just because it is graduate school level. Um, it's master's level understanding with these foundational business courses and the courses are tailored for individuals who have not yet studied business. I want to pay special attention to the Bridge to Success course you'll see on the bottom left. This is one of our uh, unique courses that's offered only at Notre Dame. The Bridge to Success course is it's teaching you, it's taught through the Career Center here. Um, at Notre Dame, we have a Career Center specifically for Mendoza graduate business students. And then within that Career Center, we have a career coach who works specifically, explicitly with the MSM students, her name is Lisa, um, and she's been with our program for a while. She works one-on-one -on -one with our students to kind of figure out what they're hoping to do after graduation, what might be a good fit, and then she also helps teach this Bridge to Success course. So helping create your personal brand, blending your undergraduate major with Mendoza skills in order to then market yourself, you know, these elevator pitches uh, during recruiting events, working on interview skills and virtual interview skills, virtual career fairs, uh, cold calling, how to tap into the alumni network. Depending on what sort of position you're looking for after graduation, the recruiting cycle may start as early as September. So we want to make sure that you are equipped and able to handle that recruiting cycle. So this Bridge to Success course is taught in the summer to prepare you for the recruiting cycle that starts fairly quickly in the fall. Um, a couple of updates that I want to mention, some things that we have added to this upcoming MSM year. So one is the, the ability to test out of classes. We are exploring the possibility of um, testing out of classes. So for example, if you were an economics major, we understand that you probably have the majority of the principles taught in the econ class, even though there might be some higher level concepts covered. Still, in general, you will understand the principles of economics. And therefore, we are looking at possibly allowing you to test out of this, kind of opening up your schedule for electives. We've always had the ability to have electives in the program, whether they are some MBA courses or even undergraduate non-business courses that you might be interested in. Notre Dame is a top-notch university uh, here in the United States, and we want to make sure that you have access to everything here. So at pretty much as long as you get permission from the professor of the class and from your academic advisor and that you are in good academic standing, we have had students that have taken these elective courses, these MBA level courses or business analytics level courses in the past. So those are some changes. I'll talk about some others coming up here in a little bit. So as far as the interterm experiences, remember the interterm is that week between the modules in the fall and in the spring. We've used uh, a variety of different ways to utilize this interterm time in the past. So sometimes you're doing case competitions. Sometimes you're doing a deep dive into a specific skill. 
Um, a couple of years ago, we did a trek into Chicago, visiting different companies and different industries. Last year in the spring, we did a tour of some local wineries, breweries, and distilleries in the Southwest Michigan area to kind of see how businesses run the supply chain aspect, the marketing aspect, management, everything like that. Obviously, this year we had some treks planned uh, to Chicago, to Indianapolis, again to the Southwest Michigan area. We're hopeful that in spring, things will calm down enough for us to be able to do those. Um, at this time, though, we are currently using the inner term on campus here to kind of go further into the bridge to success. It's kind of like a bridge to success uh, deep dive course where we will be going even further into virtual interviews and virtual career fairs. Last year we organized, we helped organize our own virtual career fair. And so it's just, it's a great chance to really, you know, sol lock up those skills, make them solid um, in order to make you successful for the next step. And then in the spring is that international immersion trip that I mentioned. So it is a 10 day trip typically spanning over interterm and then part of your spring break the following week. We have three treks, three uh, locations available. So I actually need to update this. Last year we had China and Vietnam together as one option. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to go on that just with the timing of everything happening both here and abroad. We also have a South America trek with Santiago Chile and Buenos Aires, Argentina. And then we had a South Africa trek with Johannesburg and Cape Town, which was able to go. We were able to get our students to South Africa just in the nick of time before things really started to uh, escalate over here. And then we also have some elective options. As I mentioned, we do have electives in the MBA course or the MSBA courses available to some of our students, but every MSM student is also you know, open to this 10 years hence lecture series. It's a fascinating lecture series uh, taught here on campus. That's an elective. And then we are lo also looking at adding a sports management concentration for this next year. This is an optional concentration, but we've seen that there is there has been a lot of interest in kind of the sports management role. And here at Notre Dame, where athletics are a big part of the culture and who we are, we believe that we have the capability to have an amazing sports management concentration. So for example, the, the head coach of the women's basketball team for the last 30 years or so, Muffet McGraw, she retired this last year. She is now actually a Mendoza professor and she is teaching one of the courses in sports management that we offer here. We're looking to make that into a concentration. It, um, again, that's an optional thing. So there will be more information. You know, this year is a little bit different than years we've had in the past. So we will definitely have some more information on that concentration moving forward, but some exciting developments here at Mendoza. As far as student organizations, back to this community aspect that I talked about, with your cohorts, with the MSM class, you become really great friends with those. But we understand that leadership opportunities are a great way to not only further your development, but grow that network. So we do have an MSM association with leadership roles. Um, so typically there are four, three or four students in the MSMA uh, with a president, vice president, treasury, things like that, treasurer. They focus on organizing community service activities, student activities. Um, they work on making some class apparel to sell and to give to the students. They also work across the other specialized master's associations. So we have our uh, Master's of Science in Accountancy, the MSA program, our Master's in Business Analytics, MSBA, and we're actually looking at adding a Master's of Science in Finance or an MSF program here on campus. The MSMA will work with those associations and those programs in order to create events, bring in guest speakers, alumni panels, things like that. And then there are also student organizations that are run through the MBA Association that are also open to uh, MSM students as well. So, for example, the, the Marketing Club or the Black Graduates in Management or the Consulting Club uh, with the MBA, 
these clubs are open to our MSM students as well. And not only do you get the chance to be involved in these clubs, be a part of that community, but because our MBA students are, you know, they have more work experience. Sometimes that mentor mentee relationship is formed and it's, it's great to see, like I said, once you're a part of Mendoza, you're a part of our family, no matter if you're an MSM graduate, an MBA graduate or an MSF graduate, we all work together, we're all one community. So we want to make sure that those organizations are open to everyone. I'm going to quickly go into the application requirements. Keep an eye out, probably within the next two or three weeks, I will be having another webinar where I really do a deep dive into the application, uh, giving some tips, really going deeper into it. For those of you that have already started your application, thank you so much. Um, I do see that, okay, just a reminder that if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A section, not the chat section. I see some people are here in uh, the chat section. So if you could just put those in the Q&A, that would uh, just repeat your question there. That would be great. Um, so just quickly about the application here. So we have a resume as, you know, someone potentially right out of undergrad, just a one page resume is going to be absolutely fine. We have two essay prompts of which you will choose one. Um, and just so you know, these applications are the same across the board for all of our programs here at Mendoza. We also have a four slide PowerPoint. You will not be presenting the PowerPoint. It is just a chance for you to be creative, um, show a different side of you that we can't see in your resume. We ask for two recommendations with one of these uh, required from an academic source. So a professor or an academic advisor or a department chair, something like that. Um, if you want to have more than one, more than two letters of recommendation, we allow up to three, but two are all that we, we require. And when you apply, all you do is send us the email address of those people who will be writing your recommendations, and then we directly email them a form. This just helps with, you know, uh, confidentiality and making sure everything is above board there. And we do ask for transcripts, official transcripts. We only need the official transcripts once you are admitted to the program. In order to apply and have your application evaluated, all we need are unofficial transcripts. However, we do need these transcripts from every undergraduate institution that you attended. So even if it was a semester at a community college before you transferred, we would need all of those transcripts before we go forward and make a decision. If you studied abroad, a lot of times um, those abroad grades will be reflected in your official university transcript. All we need for it to be an, uh, an unofficial transcript is the class name and the grade that you got it. Make sure also you have your name on there so we know that it is indeed your transcript. As far as the GMAT or GRE requirement, we are changing the requirement for this upcoming year. So as far for the GMAT or GRE, it is waived for all Notre Dame undergraduates and also for those with a 3.5 GPA or higher from their undergraduate institutions. If you went to graduate school and you got a 3.5 GPA or higher, that would also suffice. That would allow you the waiver. We do not, we are, this is a hard number. This is the only hard number that we have uh, as far as, you know, GRE requirements or work experience requirements. We're fairly flexible with that. When it comes to the GPA waiver, 3.5 is the minimum. So if you have a 3.49, you have the option of waiting until next semester with the hopes of raising your grade, or you can go ahead and take that GMAT or GRE. Um, and then there is a $50 application fee, but as a thank you for joining me today in the webinar, we will waive that application fee. If you use the code IRISHWEB, um, you'll see it here on the slides, all one word, all capital letters, so no spaces, all capital letters, Irish web, that will waive the $50 application fee. 
And then finally, there is an interview portion. Not everyone is invited to the interview. However, if you are invited, you will receive uh, an invitation via email to do this. For the fall semester, we are not doing on-campus interviews because of social distancing guidelines that the university has placed. We are doing all interviews, all information sessions via Zoom. Um, those are typically offered 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. That's Eastern time. We are on Eastern time. As far as application deadlines, the early decision deadline is coming up in a few weeks. September 22nd is our first early decision deadline um, with the round one deadline coming October 20th. Remember, in order to apply, we only need your portion of the application. So that's your resume, your essay, PowerPoint slides, the two email addresses of your recommenders, and then the, the unofficial transcripts and unofficial test scores. Um, and then we can go forward and actually, we don't need your transcripts or your test scores for you to apply. You can actually add those on later after you send in your application. But remember, we do need those in order to evaluate and come to a decision on your application. We wouldn't need those official test scores or transcripts until you would be admitted to the program. I get a lot of questions about when is the best time to apply. Graduate school, and especially our program, is different than undergrad. So there's not one or two big application deadlines. We have all of these deadlines in order to better fit your schedule. So I always get the question, Phil, why should I apply sooner rather than later? The biggest reasons to apply for that September, September 22nd deadline or that October 20th deadline is simple. It's there are more guaranteed seats available in the class and more guaranteed fellowship money available. We do offer merit based fellowships um, for the MSN program, typically ranging between $3,000 and $15,000. Obviously, the earlier that you apply, the more fellowship funding we have available to give you. Also, if you apply early and you get your decision, you don't have to worry about it for a whole year. Um, you, you, you're able to enjoy your senior year. You don't have to focus on your plans for next year. So I, those are my reasons for applying early. I would say that if you're an international student looking to apply, we would need your application by round three. So February 9th would be the last day that we are accepting international applications simply because it does take a lot of time, especially with the way the world is right now to uh, you know, get your I-20s process and the visa process going in order to get you on campus by June. I've also had questions before about if your university undergraduate degree conferment date goes past the start of the MSM. Unfortunately, we would need your undergraduate degree conferred by the start of the program. So if you are going to a school whose graduation is later than that June 22nd class start date, we would probably ask if you can work with your uh, registrar's office uh, in order to maybe get a letter saying that you have indeed conferred your degree, you will graduate and then we can do that. Otherwise, we would uh, encourage you to explore some of our programs that start later uh, in August, such as the Business Analytics, the Masters of Nonprofit Administration, or the MSA or the MSF. So just some quick follow, uh, final notes about why the Mendoza MSM. Obviously, I can go on and on and talk about all of the great things the MSM has to offer in comparison to maybe other programs or other universities. Again, it's that one-on-one -on -one career coaching. You really get to know Lisa in the Career Center. She gets to know you as well. Whether it's through the Bridge to Success course, your meetings with her, you can meet weekly if you want to. Um, you know, she, she's always going to be there. Even after you graduate, we have alumni that call into Lisa and say, hey, I'm ready for my next job. What can I do? Or 
have you heard anything? Or remember, once you're a part of that Notre Dame family, you're, you're in it. So we're here to help you throughout your time. The MSM is great for your first job out of college, out of the program, but it's even better for that second job, that third job. And she prepares you for those transitions because of you know, the wide range of classes that you take in the MSM, you do have the capability to pivot your focus. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're looking for that second job or a promotion, they're gonna ask what additional skills do you have other than what was displayed in your first role. Because you have exposure to all of these various business concepts, you're able to then handle that very well. There's the international immersion to Asia, South America or South Africa that I mentioned. You are able to pair your MSM with our one-year accelerated MBA. So as I mentioned, the curriculum is pretty much the first year of our two-year MBA. We do see that most of the time our MSM students will go out into the workplace, work for three or four years, and then come back and get their one-year MBA here at Notre Dame. Um, simply because it's kind of hard to know what it is you actually want to focus on in the MBA if you don't have that hands-on real life experience. If it's only theoretical, you may think, hey, I really liked this accounting course. And then you specialize in it in your concentration for the MBA program and you get your first job and you realize, oh no, I really don't like accounting. And so we do see, we encourage our MSM students to get a few years of work experience under their belt um, before they then come back to get their MBA. That being said, we do have some MB MSM students that have extensive internship experience or really know what they want to do. And so they would become eligible for that one year MBA, but it is rare. And then finally, that Notre Dame alumni network that I mentioned, number four globally, lots of alumni uh, clubs around the country and around the world. We help you tap into this network and it's amazing how often you will find a Notre Dame grad, a Mendoza alum in various offices, whether they're small boutiques to large, you know, big four firms. The alumni network is really the, one of the strongest aspects of the MSM and Mendoza. So we help you tap into that. And again, when you are applying the application fee waiver, the code is Irish web. It is located on the bottom of the additional information page. So a part of the application is additional information. At the bottom, you will see this fee waiver with an area to enter the fee waiver. So again, Irish web, all capital letters, all spaces. If for some reason it doesn't work, please let us know. If you have other questions about the application or the program uh, that I don't address here, please let us know. Um, my email address, you can reach me, again, my name is Phil, you can reach me at msm.business at nd.edu. So again, msm.business at nd.edu. And my name is Phil. Feel free to ask me any questions that I didn't cover here, or if you have some more specific questions, or you just want to chat, that's also totally fine. I get it. So... That is the end of my presentation about the MSM. Remember, if you do have questions, please do not put it in the chat area. Please use the Q&A function because it's just easier for me to check it off. So uh, I, will, I will look now at the Q&A. If you did have a question in the chat function, if you could just copy and paste it over to the Q&A so that I can more easily read it, that would be very beneficial. So I'm gonna open up the Q&A here and see what we have. Okay, so we have a question here about international GPAs and the conversion to um, the, the US GPA scale. So if you do have an international GPA, it's a little bit tricky, right? Because maybe your scale is out of 10, whereas ours is out of four. And so I would say if you clearly have a very strong GPA, we would indeed waive the GRE score. Um, and so uh, I would say if it's borderline, if it's close, 
send us your GPA. It, we have the capability to convert it into the US system. However, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, so just be mindful of that. We might ask that you apply and we, you go through the application process as we on our end process the conversion. Um, but if it's clearly you know, a very strong GPA, then I would say yes, indeed, you would be eligible for that waiver. Um, for the, for the, we have a couple of questions here about finishing the MSM and then going into the one year MBA. As I mentioned, it is possible to apply to the MBA directly out of the MSM program. It has happened in the past. There are no minimum work experience requirements for our MBA program. We look at each application holistically. Realistically, we do ask that a lot of our students from the MSM go forward and uh, get a few years of work experience under their belt, just because it does not only help you focus with the concentrations that we offer in our MBA program, but also because the average work experience in our MBA is about five years, five and a half years. It helps you, you know, more relate with your classmates, with the cohort in the program. Um, and they're able to also learn off of your experiences uh, in addition to you learning off of theirs. So it has been known to happen, but I will say that it is not an extremely common path for the MSM. So just so you're aware of that. We have questions about if you are applying to more than one program at Mendoza. As I mentioned, the application process and the application itself is the exact same for all of our programs. A couple uh, of programs such as the MSBA program might ask for an additional uh, statement of purpose or something like that. However, with the essays and the PowerPoint slides, we are able to simply copy those over so you would not need to apply twice. There is the capability of being considered for more than one program at once. We want to make sure that you are in the right fit for you. Um, you know, we're, we're all, of course, looking for the best and brightest students in our programs, but we want to make sure that you are in the right program that fits your goals and your capabilities. And so, you know, I work across a wide for all of the programs. My colleagues work across all the programs. We're constantly in contact with each other. So if we think that maybe you would be a better fit to one of our programs, other than the one that you applied, or if you apply to multiple programs, we talk to each other and we want to make sure that you indeed get the best fit that follows what you want to do and where we think that you would succeed the most. So if you are applying to more than one program, I would say send us an email. Again, the email address msm.business at nd.edu and just tell us, hey, I am looking to apply to both the MSM and the MSBA. That way you only need to send in one application, you only need to have one interview, and it just makes it easier both on your end and our end. Uh, a question here about the, the thesis, uh, if we have a thesis or a capstone. For, for the MSM program, there is no thesis or capstone because a lot of our students don't really have that business background that you'll find in a lot of other programs, um, then we, we don't have a thesis or a capstone. Some of our other programs, such as the Masters of Nonprofit Administration or the Masters in Business Analytics, they do utilize kind of a capstone or a practicum in their curriculum. But for the MSM, we do not have uh, the capstone. We do not require a thesis or an exit exam or anything like that. Uh, a question here about GRE or GMAT waivers for some other programs. If so, so currently at this time, only our program, the MSM and the Masters of Science in Accountancy, the MSA program, are waiving test scores at all. The MSBA is waiving uh, test requirements for Notre Dame undergraduates. But for the MBA, they do require that you take that GRE or GMAT, even if you did graduate from the MSM program. It just helps kind of with 
uh, seeing the competition of the class and kind of knowing your capabilities because the MBA is more intense than the MSM, they still do require that GRE or GMAT score. So here's a good question about what does the admissions team see as the most important in the application? This is a very interesting question and I'll go ahead and say that we do indeed look at each application holistically. I wouldn't say that there's necessarily one aspect that we favor uh, over other aspects. So of course, GRE, GMAT scores, your GPA, they come into play, but we realize that you are more than just a number. Maybe you've had some things going on uh, where maybe your GPA is not quite what you think your capabilities are. So we look at trend of GPA. If you're like me and you started a little slowly in undergraduate, but you were able to pick things up as you went along, we look at that. If you have your letters of recommendation that speak very strongly to your skills, we look at that. Your leadership skills, extracurriculars, uh, community service, your PowerPoint slides, are you able to follow directions, your writing skills in your essay. We look at everything. And then, of course, your interview as well. How are you a fit to the program? Is the program a fit to you, what you're looking to do? So I wouldn't say there's one particular aspect that we look at more than others. Um, but we do take everything into consideration. I will say with the GRE or GMAT, even if it is waived, if you got that 3.5 GPA or higher, you still have the option to submit a test score if you want. So if you took the GRE already and you did very well, or you're already studying for the GMAT and you think that you're going to crush it, go ahead and add it because it makes your application stronger in the end uh, so maybe it is more admissibility. And also that may help with the merit-based scholarships, the fellowships that we offer. They are merit-based. We do not offer any need-based fellowships at all. Um, but of course, if you have a very strong test score, that is going to make your application stronger and make your merit higher. And so hopefully that answered it. We have a question here about STEM eligibility and international students. So our MSM program is not a STEM designated program. Uh, currently the only STEM designated programs that we offer at Mendoza are the MSBA, the business analytics program, and we have an MBA, MSBA dual degree, uh, typically for those applicants with five years or more of work experience. The MSBA program is similar to the MSM for those with zero to two years of work experience. Because we are not a STEM designated program, I would say the international students in our program are usually a lot lower than you'll find in other STEM designated MSM programs around the country. Typically we have 10% uh, or less of international students in our program, just because we understand it is a challenge for our international applicants um, to find positions afterwards. However, that being said, we have a world-class career center that has been able to place international students from our program into positions in the United States. Of course, it's hard for us to predict what the market is. Obviously, with things going on the way they are right now, everyone is having difficulty finding full-time jobs. But we do have a specific career coach that also works with international students, kind of identifying those landing spots here. Um, and so we, of course, encourage everyone to apply. I just want to be honest that since we are not STEM designated, if that is something that you are looking for, I would highly encourage checking out our MSBA program here at Notre Dame, uh, which is much more, you know, it is STEM designated and many more international students in that program. Um, as far, well, a couple questions here about financial aid. So we do not give any full financial aid or stipends to our students. As I mentioned, it typically ranges between $3,000 and $15,000. We, uh, I would say there, we have a lot of students that get external scholarships and grants. Um, I'm not able to legally recommend any of those. However, there is a government website. If you just search on Google, graduate student scholarship government site. I, it pops up, I believe it's studentaid.gov, and then there's another link on there, I believe it's careeronestop.gov or something like that, where there's a list of 
scholarships and grants available um, that hopefully you would be eligible for. I believe right now there are about 2,000, over 2,000 uh, scholarship opportunities for graduate students alone listed on that site. So that is another option. As far as like assistantships go, we have some MSM students that do research assistance or teaching assistance. That is not something that we do here in the admissions office. Should you be admitted to the program, that's typically a conversation that is had directly between the professors and the students. We cannot dictate the needs and the, the capabilities of research at this time, simply because it does change every year for every faculty member. And so that is an, a discussion I encourage you to have directly with the faculty. We also have a lot of students that get part-time jobs, whether it's on campus or off campus. Last year, I believe about 70% of our MSM class had some form of part-time job to help uh, supplement the cost of tuition. Um, some questions about the TOEFL test. If, you, if your undergraduate institution was taught in English and that is indicated on your transcript, we would not need a TOEFL or IELTS test from you. So in order to be eligible to not take the TOEFL test or the IELTS, you would need six consecutive semesters at an English teaching institution. So if you went, if you are an international applicant, but you went to a US institution or your international institution taught in English, and that is indicated somewhere in your transcript, then you would not need to take that TOEFL test. Um, we have a question here about ethical foundations and uh, ethical implications in business and marketing. So we do have, thank you so much for your question. We do have a specific business ethics class that kind of explores these, uh, these fundamentals and these opinions. However, I will say as soon as you step onto campus, as soon as you start your classes, you can kind of see this ethical foundation as underlying in every single class. It is something that is addressed in every class, not just the business ethics. Our motto, as I said, is to grow the good in business. And so because of that, um, it, it is something that we are very conscious of and it is very actively discussed in every aspect of the MSM and every aspect of business. Question here about job placement. What fields and types of positions do program alumni usually end up in after two to three years? So if you go on our website, on the MSM website, you will be able to find our employment report for 2019. Uh, graduate business programs, release stats six months after graduation. So every university is like this, meaning that we do not have the class of 2020 employment report up yet because we just graduated in May. And therefore, if you check back around December or January, that should be updated. I am happy to say that the, the MSM class of 2019, of those that were looking for full-time jobs, 100% received full-time job offers I would say as far as landing spots for the program go, it, it kind of, it, it comes in waves. It differs from year to year. Recently, within the last two or three years, we've seen a lot of interest in consulting jobs or tech jobs or finance jobs in a variety of different industries. I saw last year a lot of students that were looking to combine their science background with our skills and go into big pharma. Um, we see a lot of consulting across a variety. You know, tech is something in the last couple of years, business analytics, analytics and analysis roles are something that's really been an uptick, something that we have focused on in the MSM. Some, uh, some feature name companies that we've had in the past, Accenture, Google, Nielsen, Uber Freight, <clears throat> excuse me, Uber Freight, has been one that we've seen the last couple of years. A lot of our students go to, um, they're based in Chicago, which is very close to campus here. Uh, so we get a lot of students that go there. E and J Gala Winery, every year we have one or two students that seem to go there as well. Um, we have some questions here about some of our other programs uh, with and the requirements there. I would recommend going on their website at this time 
They are not having test waivers. However, that may change. It is a new program that we're looking to develop. Um, and so I would say once that website is up and running, we do have on our Mendoza website, our MSF Chicago program, which is a part-time program. We will be adding an MSF residential program here, a full-time program here on campus that will look very similar. Uh, question here about timing of application. Can I apply when I have only one semester left? Absolutely. We have a lot of students that apply and they graduate a week before the MSM is set to begin. Like I said, this program is designed for those students that are maybe seniors in college right now and are looking to go right into their fifth year. About 75% of our students do that. And so absolutely, if you are still in school now, feel free to apply. A uh, question here about TOEFL or IELTS requirements. Just like everything else in our application and the numbers that you see on the MSN site, they're more guidelines rather than hard minimums. So um, what if your GPA, our average GPA is between a 3.3 and a 3.5. If you have lower than that 3.3, it's still okay to apply. For our GRE score, our average GRE score is a 310. If you have lower than a 310, it's okay to apply. For TOEFL, um, we look at around 100, 105. We have students that do have lower than this. I understand that you know, as someone that taught English in South Korea for nine years, the TOEFL test is not always the best indicator of how well you speak and understand English. And so if you have lower than the 100, students have been able to come. I do encourage you, obviously, if you do have a lower score than that, um, make sure that you know, you're still studying your English. If you have, you know, you have the capability of taking the test more than once, but there is no hard minimum for the TOEFL or the IELTS. Uh, we have a question here about internship opportunities. Because of the intensive nature of the program and because we do start in June, in mid-June, it is difficult for students to get an internship during the program. Some students during their winter break will do some accelerated internships and we have had our career center kind of work with them to do that. Other students will simply do uh, you know, winter jobs or summer jobs. We, we see less students interested in internships once they're a part of our program simply because of that accelerated nature and because once they finish our program, they want to go forward and get a full-time job. The average starting salary for the MSM graduates uh, is about $65,000. And so a lot of students say, well, hey, I want that as opposed to an internship. Um, but our Career Center has worked with students that have been seeking internships in the past. Again, a wide range of functions and industries there, kind of dependent on what the student is looking to do. Um, we have questions here about international students and job placement and stats. Uh, at this time, the MSM program does not have statistics specifically for international students. As I mentioned, we typically do not have that many international students in the program simply because we are not STEM designated. I will mention again that in the class of 2019, which did have international students as well, 100% of those students that were looking for jobs were offered jobs. And so uh, we don't have specific jobs. We always, with all of our students, ask for flexibility just because, as I said, it's hard to dictate what the market is looking for, especially when it comes to international hiring. Um, so I have a question here about the English program. Uh, because this is the business school, unfortunately I cannot answer them. I would encourage you to reach out to those other business programs. Uh, question here about the PowerPoint presentation. Absolutely. So. Again, I will have a webinar probably in about two, two and a half weeks that really dives deep into the application. For the PowerPoint, it is four slides uploaded as a PDF. You will not actually be presenting your PowerPoint slides. It's just a great chance for you to show who you are that we can't find in three other places in your application. If you want to use pictures and clip art, that's great. If you want to use graphics, that's wonderful. I just ask, please don't type words on blank slides. We read enough essays as it is. 
I don't need to read an essay in PowerPoint form. Less is always more, but have fun with it and just be creative. It's a great chance and a unique aspect of our application um, that really allows you to kind of break out of the box. Um, question here about this program for business undergrads. Yes, this program is not for business undergrads. If you are a business undergrad, we have a variety of other programs that we encourage you to explore, our master's in accounting, finance, business analytics, or nonprofit administration. Uh, but this program, if you are a business minor, that is okay. However, if you are a business major, uh, we would ask that you please look for a different program simply because we are specifically designed for those students that don't have any business exposure. And so if you were a business major, you may know too much of the information, especially at the beginning of the program, and we don't want you to pay for some knowledge that you already have. And so that's why I would encourage you to look at some of the other programs that we offer. We have a question here about uh, the, the fellowships and the merit aid fellowships there. Uh, I kind of answered some of the other forms of financial aid. We're also FAFSA, and so uh, you, you get federal student loans that way, part-time jobs, assistantships, those external grants from the website that I mentioned. But again, with the fellowship considerations, your, we look at each application holistically. So as long as you're putting your best foot forward, you would then be able to get that fellowship offer. Again, those ranges are typically between $3,000 and $15,000. Um, we do not offer full rides at this time, but again, if you want to take your GRE or GMAT more than once, that's a great way to strengthen your program or your uh, profile if you didn't do as well as you wanted to the first time, or if your GPA is not quite what you think. If you're applying to more than one program, thank you here for this question. Um, feel free to reach out to us and our operations team. We can work with you and save you time from duplicating work by reaching out to us and simply copying over your information. That also helps us on our end um, because then we don't have duplicate records in the file and we don't get confused there. Um, all right, what else here? Do we need to report GMAT and TOEFL scores from GMAT or and ETS, or can we attach the official score reports we receive? If you have your official score reports, you can definitely attach those. If you want to have them um, directly from the GMAT or ETS companies, I believe that's also fine. Remember to apply, we just need your unofficial GMAT and TOEFL scores. Uh, and then should you be admitted to the program, that is when we would then require your official scores. Um, there's a question about part-time jobs for international students. I know that we have had international students in the past who have had part-time jobs. Typically with a student visa, you're able to work up to a certain amount of hours. I believe it's 10 or 15 hours a week on your student visa as part of your part-time job. So uh, as long as it doesn't exceed that amount, it should be totally fine to work a part-time job while being this program. Uh, English proficiency tests. Again, if you did not go to a, an institution, undergraduate institution that taught in English, we would ask that you submit a TOEFL or IELTS test along as a part of your application. Um, the letter, a uh, question here about letters of recommendation and the official letterhead. I would say that it is not required. Again, we just need the email addresses of your recommenders and then we send them our own form that they have the option of uploading a letter of recommendation. Some recommenders don't even do that. They just answer our questions and then they don't attach a separate letter. So I would say don't worry too much about official letterhead or anything like that. Um, so if it is not mentioned on the transcript that the course was taught in English, can that be an additional document from the college? Absolutely. As long as we get something from your college or university that says that the, the instruction was in English, that is fine. It does not have to be actually a part of 
your transcript, a lot of colleges and universities will have a separate form that says the instruction was done in English. That's fine. Just add that along with your transcript when you are applying to the program. A question here about early decision and if it is binding. So if you are admitted and you confirm your spot in uh, the MSM as early admission, it is binding. So um, we would ask that you, are, that you withdraw your candidacy from other schools and then your deposit would be non-refundable at that time. It simply helps us know that you are indeed coming to the program, um, as opposed to if you, you get in early decision, you confirm your seat, you pay your deposit, and then you don't show up. Not only are you taking a seat away from another potential candidate, but you know we are not optimizing the space, the limited space that we have available, or the fellowship funds that we possibly would have given you. So if you are admitted early and you confirm your spot, we give a month for you to confirm your spot. Um, then indeed, yes, that is binding, and we would ask that you not consider other programs. And finally, if you have other questions or concerns, or you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one informational with me, or again, you just want to chat about the program, the university, the town, the application process, please email me at msm.business at nd dot edu and again my name is phil thank you so much for joining me those are all of the questions that i have again look for an email probably within the next week or two for our next webinar coming up about the application q a i will do a deep dive into the application the the process some tips and some uh, some do's and don'ts there so i look forward to seeing you there if I don't see you there, I look forward to learning more about you in the application process. Thank you once again, and go Irish. Everyone have a great day.